<laughs> so you see, in our path for full enlightenment, the most important thing is to be happy. That's why in all the meditation retreats that I joined from Acham Brahm, actually he was the first person who taught me the meaning of meditation. When I was ordained in 1998, then I learned meditation from many teachers. We call it shopping. You know shopping or not? <laughs> I also shop, you also shop. Lah. So you shop here, you shop there, you got no result. I attended retreats, I don't want to mention names, they asked me to do meditation one hour without teaching me the basic. Then walking one hour. I think most of you have also attended that sessions. So I walk one hour, I sit one hour. After all these things, I got back pain. Lah. <laughs> then, you know, I was a naughty monk also. Whenever there is a rest period or when the teacher is not looking, I sneak back to my bed and have a rest. <laughs> Until the, the meditation teacher came and knocked at my door. Hey, go for interview. Lah. <laughs> uh, that was what I learned when I was young. Then I gave up meditation. In fact, I gave up Buddhism already because I said it was so tough one the life. Better, better, you know, maybe go back, become a layman, easier life. Then I met a Chambram in 2000, Mahindrama Temple. At that time, he was not that, that fat. Lah, huh? I think I met all of you already. And he was so nice. He said, meditation is something that makes you happy. And the first thing he told me that made my eyes open was, don't follow the timetable. <laughs> you know why? Because I've been a victim of timetable. One hour walking, one hour sitting, one hour walking, one hour sitting, then five o'clock only give you one hour break. That break, you just have, uh, don't know what type of drink, the allowables were different. And after that, you must wash your clothes, do everything within that one hour. Then six o'clock, you must attend the lecture. And the lecture is not interesting. Do you know how the lecture day was done? They open one book, then they thought, this is what the Buddha taught. At one time, when the Buddha was at Sravasti, at that time he met 500 Arahans. Then I was looking at the, the teacher. After that, the translator came in and you know, spoke in Mandarin or in Hokkien or, or, or whatever. Then I was just looking at the clock. Whew. So long, only five minutes pass. Ah. Not like a chambram, one and a half hour or so, not enough time. <laughs> Do you agree? So after that, well, I was going to sleep. Then my teachers caught me, you know, trying to doze off. Eight or nine o'clock, we are supposed to go to sleep. The meditation teacher said, all of you, please stay back. All of you have been sleeping during the meditation talk. But inside my heart, I say, of course, la, our attention cannot sustain more than 45 minutes long if you only use dry stuff. At one time, the Buddha was here. At one time, the Buddha was there. You don't express in a very... Uh, you didn't express in the very here. Okay. You didn't express not coming. Hello. It's no more there. Hello. Ah, sorry, this is too high fi. <laughs> The reason why I didn't clip on Ajahn's rope is because his he doesn't rope, have a clip. His rope always falls off. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So Ajahn came and then he gave me the happiness that I had never had in my life. I was learning from the other teacher. At that time I had Snama 8. So the teacher said, Don't go to rest. You must struggle in your meditation. Use your willpower to struggle in the meditation. So I said 9.30, you know, stomach ache already. Why well, I said like that? <laughs> One or two hours or cannot like us or you all suddenly Achan go out, also you go out already. <laughs> <laughs> Agree? So I cannot walk like that. Then until 11 o'clock for lunch, I have to go out. Wow, oh, that time stomach very pain. So when I told Achan, I said, Achan, I've been to an earlier teacher who taught me that you must struggle in meditation. You must use willpower in meditation. Then I said, I was at that struggling, like my back so pain, my stomach so pain. Achan gives one very nice word. He said, if I were the Buddha, you know what I would do, Kaisi? I would take you up from your meditation seat, lead it up to your room, 
and let you have a good rest. This is what the teacher taught. That's why I remain with him until today. One teacher is enough. One who can show me the path, who give me the happiness of stillness, peace, calmness. And don't rush for anything. Be simple. Keep it simple. Three words. Every time I ask Achan, you know, 20 years I know Achan. But I know that I don't go and catch out him for the interview. Like all of you catch out him so long, really, what for I go and catch out interview, or really or not? First two years, I catch out him. Like, sorry, I have to use Penang language. Huh? I got a chance permission already. He said, <laughs> use the local language. Because in the Arana Vibanga Sutta, it is stated that you must use the local language. So I use the Penang language. Most of you are from Penang, right? Gachuki. Ah, Penang and Lang. So I learned from Achan. Achan taught me very simple thing. He said, keep it simple. Uh, you, get, uh, you know how I tap Achan uh, during my 23 years? I know Achan and our MC. I think she knows me. I always sit the one corner, the Mahindrama there one. Okay, I think you see me there, a like, very small guy, now getting fatter also. So, uh, sitting there in the corner. And then uh, every time, uh, uh, I won't talk much. But during the breakfast time, where we have to wait in the dining hall, something like that, the chanting hall, and then the lunch time, that's where I press Achan for answers. And Achan gave a very good answer. Every time I don't know anything, I ask him. But the thing is that I think uh, for 23 years, I asked all the questions I need to ask, and Achan gave me all the answers I need. And of course, through so many years, I listened to Achan's lectures, whether personally or virtually, through the YouTube, etc. And then he always tell me three simple words until I keep it today. He, he said, Kaisi, don't talk too much about all those high five terms. Like this one, I don't understand also. What is Kamaja, Rupa, all those type of big, big words. Lah. You know, I cannot understand. He said, keep it simple. The cultivation life is so simple. It is what? The four noble truths, the noble eightfold path, peace, kindness, and stillness just like that so i start off with the first story of keep it simple it was actually done by acham brahm but modified by kaisi <laughs> <laughs> you see all of you are laughing happy or not yeah so this story is called keep it simple story if you look into your youtube huh, i think during covid times acham's disciples jayako etc did a 10 minute video clip called the Buddha air. Because you always see when we travel, we go through the Buddha air. The more things we throw away, the lighter we are, the more we go up. Many stories he told us I could remember. So I invented this one. I call this the Buddhist Titanic ship. Because he talked about air, I talk about ship. How to keep things simple. There was the professor. He was on cruise, on cruise lah. You know, some rich people, they can go on cruise in a ship and the ship is called the Titanic. That one I add one, Acham Bram didn't add lah. <laughs> ah, so to make it interesting and localized. Then he was a professor, always a beard one, to show that he is very intellectual, reads a lot, like some of the Buddhist philosophers. Acham also warned me, don't be a Buddhist philosopher, you know. Then you start to argue the terms you forget to cultivate. You know, there are some uh, intellectuals who write to, to talk about what is the difference between citta, mano, vinyanya, all the hard, hard words. Right? Acham said that one is an intellectual problem for you to see the peace and stillness in your mind. So this story was very good. You know, the professor one day at night, he was just resting. You pay so much money already. After the dinner, you were resting. Resting where? Resting on the lazy chair. La. Enjoy the fresh air. You know, the cruise is not cheap one, you know. Then he saw a sailor walking by. He said, sailor, sailor, come. I want to talk to you. I feel very boring. And you know who the sailor was? Popeye the sailor man. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I said, I'm a vegetarian. My name is Popeye. I ate spinach. Okay, Popeye, you have been working for so long this, on this cruise? Yes, for the past 10 years, I've been working on this cruise. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, then he says, 
Papa, are you free tonight? You have done your duties, right? Why don't you sit with me? And let me talk to you about the sky, the galaxy system, the Milky Way, etc. All the systems. Well, Papa got headache. Lah. Listen to this star description, that star description. Then Papa say, sorry, professor. The only thing I know was when I was in kindergarten, my mother taught me, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Correct? The pastor I don't know about this, but you really have to patient because it's your customer, you know. If you complain to the big boss, uh, Pop, I may have no job already. So first day, all about the skies and the, the PhD. He said, I'm a professor. I have a PhD in all about the skies. Is it astronomy or whatever? Then the second day, same thing happened. After dinner, the professor called Popeye again. He said, now, I want to tell you, I got another PhD. It's all on water. Is it called marine science or whatever it is? Wow, one hour, la, Popeye has to listen to all the jellyfish story, the whales and the shark and the whatever it is. Until, la, also very tough. He said, okay, okay, enough, enough. The third day, not enough for oh. He has to listen to the geography already, the history of hurricanes, how the wind blow, how tsunami come about, cyclone, how the how many temperature, la, the speed, la, all these kind of things. Wow, pop, I really blow. Then the fourth day or fifth day, it, there was a storm. The, the, the ship hit a, a rock and it caused like Titanic, it's starting to leak and then the ship is sinking. So Popeye was not to be seen. Is Popeye. Popeye was handing out all those safety things, lah, you know, safety jackets, all the Malay, we call pelampung, lah, all these sort of things. Sorry, I got to use Malay, okay. Lah. So all these things the Popeye was handing out. Then the Popeye missed the professor. Lah. He just ignored the professor, he gave everyone. Then the professor came to him and said, Popeye, Popeye, give me one safety jacket. Papa I said, you don't need one, you're so clever. Everything about the sea also, you know, you jump to the sea, jellyfish become your friend. <laughs> Anything, everything is there, you know so much about the sea, the algae, the water, everything. No need to give you the jacket. The professor said, Popeye, please help me. I can't swim. <laughs> so what does this show you? You may know so much about the philosophy of Buddhism. You may debate Abhidharma, you know, but the simplest thing is that you do not know even how to swim. So when we learn Buddhism from Achan, we always learn it in a very simple, practical way. That's why I like Buddhism. It is very practical. So when I give Dharma talks everywhere, I can't give hi-fi Dharma talks. I'm not an Abhidharma expert. I don't know much about Abhidharma. I think Achan also said Abhidharma was not discussed in the first council and he rejected it outright. So what I teach wherever I go is always practical dharma. What is practical dharma? Practical dharma is very simple only. I say this door got in, got out. Have you got an in-between door? No such thing. You eat, tomorrow you shit. Anything else in between? Constipation, you're going to see the doctor already. <laughs> you're either a boy or a girl. Correct or not? Two simple things. You're good or you are bad. You are virtuous or you are not virtuous. So this life is so simple. It is just A or B, A or B. So in our practical Buddhism, we also learn things in a simple way. So in order to cultivate our life, we have a long way to go. No? We don't know when we get the Arya ship or maybe some of you already hit the Arya ship, I don't know. We have a long way to go. So what do we need to help us? Two things you need to know. For me, and Achan actually added another thing. The first thing you need to know is to have a forgiving heart. This long path, the Noble Eightfold Path, starts with a forgiving heart. Forgive yourself every day. Your body, speech, and mind, you know, all the things that you do. Tonight, before you go to sleep, forgive yourself. And forgive the friends, the fellow yogis who slept beside you, who snort, and you want to give a little bit of comment, but because of Achan's uh, lectures a few days you say oh, you better don't say anything like it's not the noise that disturbs me it's the dog. Well, I don't disturb the noise the noise disturbs me I say oh better don't say anything but maybe inside your heart that is the the fume coming up you every day also snore one why like that one 
isn't it? So all these type of things, we forgive others, we forgive ourselves. Forgiving can lead you to a long way along your path. Number two, have gratitude. I always believe the Buddha's term of gratitude is called Ka'anu. Ka'anu means we must have gratitude. So we've got a place to stay here, so nice. Right or not? Cushion, everything. We have the gratitude. Gratitude to your cushion. So before you sit on your cushion, have gratitude to the cushion. Thank you, cushion, for allowing me to sit on it. Understand? And then give me the comfort. Just like the Kusa grass that gave the Buddha's comfort when he first meditated in Bogaya. So the gratitude thing uh, is very important for us cultivators. As long as you have gratitude, the path goes a long way. So when people ask me, how do we cultivate this way? I say, have a forgiving heart. See the good points of others that is forgiving heart. Achan uh, expanded it a day, three days uh, earlier. And most important thing, I think we must have gratitude. So when we are morning time for us, man, we have a gratitude. We are born Botak. Very gratitude. We are now sons of the Buddha. For you all, not Botak, never mind. You have nine day retreat. Tomorrow, I'm so happy. I got people who prepare breakfast for me. People who worry on our behalf during the retreats. You know, Brother Kaur, I saw him sometimes also nodding the head off. Because all of us are aging, like we cannot bluff. Even you can see Achan was very different from 30s, um, uh, 23 years ago when he came with Venerable Damarato. Correct? Now everyone, we are aging. Last time I can sit and talk a lot. Now also 60 over. One or two hours of talk or one or two hours of sutta studies, I also cannot stand. So with gratitude, you work a long way. So that's why this question, I don't know what the questions are today. If I can answer it, I answer it. If I can't answer it, I let Achan answer it. <laughs> because I put back in the box, then tomorrow he has to answer it. Is that fair what? Nah? Ah, that's why I, I, I feel comfortable talking to you because my teacher is still around you. <laughs> of course, he will back me up like you won't say no lah. <laughs> Correct or not? So don't worry. Tomorrow, if I can't answer it, he will answer it. So my answers to questions will be limited to what I know. And remember, I will tell you one thing. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. I don't want to lie to people. If I say this is not in my area, I'm not good in it, you have to ask Sachan. Because sometimes uh, your questions uh, are not meditation questions. One. Your questions are taken from the difficult books in the, 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 the uh, like Bisudhi Maga, you know, the path of purification. Then you ask, uh, Achan, can you explain the meaning that uh, how to reach Niroda Samapati? Well, that one is very hi-fi one. You know what I mean? I think the person who, can, who has experienced that was that monk who stayed eight days and did not talk to anyone. On the retreat, remember, the first day of the retreat, he slept through or meditated through until the eighth day he opened the eyes and everybody says, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. They say it's a good living example. Uh, this type of people may have experienced the Niroda Samapati. So if you were to ask me, I wouldn't know what it is. I know that everything stopped. Like the what Achan said yesterday, I stopped. Anguli Mala, have you stopped? So the word stop is the key word, but how to get that real stopping point? Uh, that one you must ask the meditators who can sit long and who can see everything step by step. So difficult ones, I admit, I don't know. I don't want to give you book answer. Book answer, you just tell me, Sufu, I Google, I got the ready. <laughs> okay, so be frank, uh, that's the best. Dear Rachan Brahm, thank you for making Buddhism fun. Does it become an issue for Buddhists to follow, practice, pay homage to Buddhism, Taoism, etc.? Now, it means that if you are a Buddhist, remember one thing. A person is called a Buddhist is not by labeling. A person is called a Buddhist, even if you do not fill in the form. You know the form? You have to fill in the form. Sometimes when I was young, when I was just following Buddhism in the grandmother's cultural way, you know what I mean? I think most of us are like that, right? Cultural Buddhism. And then when the teacher gives you the form, name, nationality, agama, religion, I scratch my head and put Buddhist. But do I really know Buddhism? I don't think I know. 
is only when we have been exposed to the teachings of the Buddha in the Nikayas, the four Nikayas, that we really know the word of the Buddha, the Buddha Vachana. So prior to that, we are still bound by our culture. So many of you may write the word, I'm a Buddhist, but may I ask you when you are when you ask to talk about Buddhism, I think you will talk more of cultural Buddhism or Taoism, half half a bit. So you're asking me, what is actually a Buddhist? A Buddhist is one person who did not need to write and fill up the form that he is a Buddhist. A Buddhist is one person who follows the noble eightfold path. You call your Buddhist. No need to tell people you are a Buddhist. No need to advertise that you're a Buddhist. As long as you write down, as long as you tell yourself, I follow the noble eightfold path. So whether you write or you don't write, you follow the noble eightfold path, you are already considered a real Buddhist. Because in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the Buddha mentioned one very important thing. He says, for anyone who practices the noble eightfold path correctly, 100%, or the marks 100%, right view, right motivation, you know, right all this uh, action, right speech, life, right livelihood, and sama samadhi, right stillness until the end, the Buddha say we will still see arahants. So many of you say, Sufu are very hard to find arahant today. Very hard to find Arya today. No la, easy to find. Because the noble eightfold path is still complete. The word of the Buddha, we call it the Buddha Vachana, through the four Nikayas are still there. Today no exhibition. Last time they would put all the four Nikayas there for sale. So as long as the word of the Buddha is still there, the noble eightfold path is clearly explained and clearly practiced by any individual, whether you are a male or female, you have the right, the ability to enter the path. So many of you have a false view, you know, now cannot cultivate la sefu. I think I better make a vow, ah, when my Triya Buddha come, ah, I, say, I don't know when my Triya Buddha will come, <laughs> low. 56.4 billion years until now is in Tusita heaven, no, no, long time later on, come down here, how many billion years? Huh? Those who read the, the Maitreya one will know that that time when he come down and you are born there. Okay, then you say, I would attack, I cultivate, la. got Maitreya Buddha, easy. La. I said, no. Many of you meet a wrong Aditan. Some of you say, I want to make a vow to be born in Maitreya time. You know, I mean, some of you have made this vow. Then I can learn directly from my triya. La. All of us are half past six. La. The word of the Buddha is the best. La. You see, Asan always point back. The teacher is the best. Teacher one is the Buddha. So I want to wait until my triya Buddha. Now let me tell you, you can be born in my triya time, but you may not be able to see the teachings of my triya. So don't make, I want to be born in my triya times. For me, I will say, I want to be born where there is real Dharma, the Buddha Vachana, continue to practice, if I can end my birth and death this very life, continue to practice until I reach my Parinibbana, meaning my final Nibbana. Now, I'll tell you a story. This story is a very funny story. When I was a young monk, 20 over years ago, you know, young monks are very curious, everything also want to go and join, want to learn this, want to learn that. So there was one lady, she got psychic powers, so-called psychic powers. Then she looked at me, I was just a young monk, ma. Wow, look at me, wow, that, why you're a monk? No, I said, yes, I'm just a Udin. She said, wow, you are very lucky. La. I said, wow, very lucky. Wow. What is so lucky about me? You were born in India during Buddha's time. La. Oh, I was so happy. I said, wow. She could look at my past life and said, I was born in the Buddha's time, in, the, in Buddha's time in India, you know. La, I looked so happy. Wow. Elated, they call it. But the next moment, I was downfallen. You know why? Because she said, but you were a dog tied near the tree near Bogaya. <laughs> I was a dog tied to a tree near Bogaya. I said, are you how to get the Dharma like this? Get, on, get what I mean? Just like I said, many people say I want to be born in my Triya's time. 
Then when you are born in Maitreya's time, you were the, in the Genghis River, bathing yourself, you know, not getting the, don't, don't, don't have the affinity to meet the Buddha. And even if you have the affinity to meet the Buddha, many of you are doing what? No, to do dana only what? The Buddha come, then like what Achambra always say, like Ananda, always go home empty-handed compared to the other monks. You know why? Because Ananda was so handsome. One of the most handsome disciples of the Buddha was Ananda. He was so handsome that every time when he went for dana, all the ladies, the ladies same when are attracted to the monks, right? The ladies can cook, the monks, uh, the males do not cook. So the ladies, when they kneel down, like what you do when you do dana, when the monk goes for his pindachara, arms round, while wow, all the monks come already, like, you know, so Ananda was walking, the, all the ladies kneel down. Wow, they can compare Ananda to other monks. They say, Ananda, so handsome, so handsome. So when they pour the rice, uh, they take the rice out, they not put in the bar wall. Pour, oh, I'm so handsome, or pour on the, on the ground. <laughs> Who got it? The dogs got it. <laughs> ah, so you were born too handsome also, be careful. This is what we, we, we have. So that is why, if you are born and just get dana only, can you get dharma from the teacher? No. I want is to be born where the teacher is around and the teacher can give me direct teachings. The Buddha Vachana of the Buddha is very powerful. No person has the Buddha Vachana of a Samasam Buddha. You know, for example, only a Samasam Buddha in the Aguttara Nikaya, there is Dasa Bala. The 10 abilities of the Samasam Buddha, which even Chariputta and all the Arahats don't have. One thing that the Buddha has, or the Samasam Buddha has, is his ability to see which method of meditation suits you. You know what I mean? Let's say you are very suitable for Anapanasati, he will tell you, hello, you Anapanasati. Oh, you are very uh, hatred a lot. Oh, he look at you, he said, okay, Metta or whatever. And then that things would hit you already. That is the Buddha's ability. So you get to see the Samasam Buddha. He sees you. He gives you your meditation object, which directly, you know, goes in line, tailor made with your needs, your temperaments. And he asks you, go to the, you know what Achan always says, seclusion heart, meditate there. And in no other time, another Arahat is, has come out already. So if you get this, it is good. If you don't, well, at least this life, the Dharma is still there, we can then follow. So the most important thing is, if your heart has the normal Eightfold Path, the heart has the normal Eightfold Path in you, you took refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, three of them, took refuge means your faith in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, put it in the center of your heart. When I put these three things in the center of my heart, it means that I follow the Buddha's teaching 100%. I follow the Noble Eightfold Path. But even though like that, when I see my past, you know what I mean? Before I was a Buddhist, I was a Taoist. My, my granny always take me to buy the Tuapek Kong and the whatever Ang Kong. I still go and pay respect. You don't say, now I'm a Buddhist, okay? Tuape Kong, all the Kong, you are smaller than me. We don't have this type of things. We have gratitude. But the practices that I want is the practices of the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Remember? So don't be somebody to say that you are very different from the others when you become a person who practice the Buddhist path. There was a book written by Achan Brahm. He just said, one of the most powerful books in Buddhism was the art of disappearing. So the more you are an Arya, the more you are in your practice, the development of practice, the less ego you have. The more you mellow down, the more you disappear in the midst of others. That's why I tell you, my mother, that's why when my mother was still alive, every year we, are, we can go back to see our parents' one. I always have, as monks we do, please remember, uh, even Achan went back to England to see his mother, right? After many years, and he took the arrow fruit or whatever to go back to his parents to see his mother. 
and then there was that, that, that time the she said she she couldn't give me time to two ladies until today one of the nurse that stepped the backside one <laughs> the other one was the aeroflot waitress because she asked for a drink you know free flow is it in the so can i have a fruit juice what fruit juice oh Achan got shocked and they are not asked for and eat already so she said two girls that she really had cannot give meta was the one in the arrow float and the other one was the one that jacked him in the hospital that he mentioned so that was what happened so when i go back to we have to you see we are allowed to go and see our parents every year i go back and see my parents twice the first is Chinese New Year. I have to have in the temple for the first few days. But when the, you know, the rituals have sobered down, I asked leave from my master. I said, this te go te la, not much activity. People come and pai jian already, you know. Say, can I go back and see my mother? Then my master said, yes. Then every time when there is Mother's Day, if it doesn't fall on the first or the 15th day, or where we have a lot of chanting and etc., I also asked my master, Master, can I go and see my mother? Or uh, because it is Mother's Day, just buy something for her, okay? Or get something for her. Just like Achan, when he went back to see his mother, you know the, the, the shelf story? First year, he got a warm bed. The second year, he got something for kangaroo or whatever, put on the shelf. After four or five times, they say the shelf cannot sustain all the things. He got to put it away. Then he knows that the shelf is like our mind, putting on too many things inside. So when I went back to see my mother, my mother was very happy. Why is my mother happy? Because I don't impose on my mother. You know what I mean? In meaning to say, she said, okay, come in, stay. You are a vegetarian. I say, mom, you don't have to get me a special plate, special, special plate, special tray, special spoons, whatever, special cups, everything. Then you have to cook for me, buy a new frying pan, a new rice cooker, new slow cooker. I say, don't worry all this. Just cook like what you do. But of course, uh, cook for me, then you cook for your family. Lah. So uh, for example, I eat chai sim, lah, because vegetarian must eat chai sim, but so my mother would cook for me the chai sim with the mushroom, carrot, etc. She would cook for me, put back out already. Then the same chai sim inside, right? Uh, he would put all the meat and everything, like, like eggs or whatever, put inside, then the whole family eat. Then I must not fast. I never, I never said I want to sit in a special place. I said, let me sit in the same table, but the corner, like, I don't to, you know, disturb you all. So that's why my mother always welcomed me. And during New Year, a lot of shows, right? She, my mother see the show, I never say, I'm here, huh? this today, you better switch off the TV. Huh? Respect a bit. Huh? I never say that. You go and see your show. Okay? Now, I, I see show, but I don't see 100%. Sometimes the reason why I just follow like that, why? Because I know that I want to inject Dharma. You cannot think, I cannot change my parents' Dharma one. I think all of you also have the same experience. It's very difficult to teach your loved ones Dharma. My mother won't, won't accept me. Still call me my, my name, you know. And my name is Ahi. Always call me Ahi. Never call me Sifu one. <laughs> ah, he's, to, to her, you are still her son. I think Acham Brian also got the same experience. So to talk Dharma, you can say, Mom, Mom, please sit down now. I talk to you about what I'm talking to you now. Right view? Cannot. So I let her see the movie, the, the Taiwan series, a Kwan Hee Thai or whatever. Then I just send it ah. Then I look at one point already, you know. What is it? Good get good, bad get bad. Kama vipaka. Then I inject inside her. I say, Mom, you see, you have seen this show, you see this person. Lao lang eluyeneche, boy lai teo ka ku keng, eng ko la buda kai. I say, ha 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 ha. I got inject nama already wa. She, is, she learned through this way. You cannot say now, mom, you better open the Agutara Nikaya, let me teach you verse number one, number two. I think she will say next year, you better don't come every year. <laughs> Do you agree? This is called practical Dharma. So you see, even though I know I'm a Buddhist, but my house has all the Tua Pe Kong, Sing Kong, all the Lo Chia Kong, all the Gao Te Tian, I never say, mom, throw them away. Continue to respect them. Okay, if you want, of course, if they allow, if you really have an altar, put the Sakyamuni Buddha in front, a small one would do. 
as a show of respect, but don't go and make the harmony at home dismantle. Some people, they go and say, throw all the topek, all the angkong, the one is from the heritage one. Ah. 200 years ago, your grandma, great-grandfather, you know, has been having all the devas. And then you tell them now, a pure Buddhist, throw everything away. I say, don't do like this. Because Buddhism is very practical. It is the harmony in the family that is more important than throwing the rupas away. So I said, you don't have to worry, get a small Buddha, okay? Or if not, you can get your photo frame Buddha. You want to do your chanting, open up the photo frame, do your itipiso chanting, everything. After over, close it, then the whole family is happy. And remember this, I said, in Buddhism, we were taught gratitude. I've seen my granny, you know, when I was very small at that time. Every day I go to school, my granny would talk to the sing kong. Last time I got one sing kong at house. Granny would say, sing kong, sing kong, ah, po pi wai ah hi ah, ki o ah, mai tiu ah ho ah, tui lai mai tiu ah ho ah, ho ho ki ping an ki ping an tui. The sing kong, I don't know whether not the head or not. The next day, when I have exams, that's what most of you, your kids are doing. You know what they do? Sing kong, sing kong, ah, why can't have form five SPM? Ah, na i can you be ko bahasa Malaysia? Jadi sing kong cai mesti bahasa Malaysia. Ma cai be ko English ah, jitiam kita gopiam ah, pai sa be ko ah, matematik ah, sa tiam kita si tiam puan. Jadi si objektif ya A B C. Jadi mesti objektif ya siapa ya? Sing kong, sing kong, tolong popi wai kia iki kaila wi ta mi kia i ta mi kia tolong hoi ki kaila ho wai kia ya pe lap e chap lap e chap e lap e kaila So I was thinking for 15 years and 18 years my granny has been talking to the sing kong and maybe the devas do bless you because remember in the Buddha there were two sutta they say devas do your job if the people give offerings of fruits and everything to you Mahaparinibbana sutta Another one is called the Ratana Sutta. If the devas, you have to do your job, don't, there's no such thing as free lunch. If they have this respects to you, you please take care of them. So that's why until today, when I see all those devas, I still Anjali, showing respects. This is like Ajahn said. You have to rest. The devas could help you with the tiffin, give you food, give you everything. Like uh, there was a very uh, well-known monk, I don't mention the name. He always says, that he respected every day, he would even go and say hello morning all the devas because he says whenever you have a temple project there will always be obstacles, hindrances by respecting the devas of the area asking the devas for the blessings maybe the obstacles can be reduced so we always believe in the power of devas the power of unseen beings so respect is there you know, the courtesy is there, but refuge inside still the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. This is what I practice in Buddhism. So even my granny, what, after you know, they, uh, they took refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, they want to go and you know, pray or what, say, go instead there. But remember, when you're free, learn a bit of Buddhism. Learn a bit of right view. Take care of your body, speech and mind. So slowly we learn the Buddhist path. What is death? How should we approach it with dignity? Should we be afraid of it? Everybody has to die. That's why I say to all of you, uh, I mean, maybe it's the first time you are hearing from me. For those of you who have heard my lectures before, I said, nah, I asked them, who created you? Oh, they got blue already. I don't know who created me. I say, father, mother, la, fama. You know, we have a PAMA here. <laughs> Federal Agricultural Marketing Authority. Last time we studied geography. So it's a PAMA. Lah. But I said, but your parents did something very wrong. You know? I said, what? Well, I was thinking about Dharma or whatever, Karma. He said, I always tell people, you are worse than a piece of bread. A bread, loti. Ah. Look, I see what you say, loti. Ah. Loti will expiry date. Lu, expiry date. Do you agree? All oh, the bread did you buy? Organic bread or whatever. Even the Milo or whatever allowables that you are eating in the evening. You see that there's an expiry date. But you, do you, there's no father, mother there to chop the expiry date for you? Nobody dares to chop the expiry date for you. 
So it means anytime you are born, anytime you can go. So be prepared to see this. So that's why there was a uh, medical coroner. Ajahn Brahm missed this joke. I think I just say very fast. A medical coroner means a medical examiner like Dr. Quincy. Last time when we were young, we watched the movie called Dr. Quincy. Medical examiner. He was sick. Why was he sick? Because every time when he was asked to write a medical report, autopsy, cut the body already, what is the cause of death? He always put there, birth. <laughs> what is the cause of death? He never say, uh, what, uh, heart attack, la, cancer, la, or old age, la, blah, 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 blah. No, he put there, birth. So he got sick. Because that is the, the most, the basic answer. You are born, you die already. But we don't know when you die. So that's why I always respect the English people, those who taught me English. They say the moment you are born, you are called old already. Do you agree? A one-day-old baby, two-day-old baby. I haven't seen in the dictionary they use one-day young baby. No <laughs> chat lah. So maybe you should coin the word like kindfulness lah. <laughs> A Tam Brown coined the word kindfulness. So maybe you could try one day young baby. No, it is telling you the moment you are born, the moment you are ready to die. So you must face death happily. How to face death happily? A Chan say always have a bright mind. You know our mind, eh? actually if now you close your eyes, you know your mind very well already. Your mind takes you to where you are going to be born. Your citta, your nama. We only have two things. One is called the nama, the other one is called the rupa. So when you die, your rupa is there. Your nama comes up, the, the four aggregates nama. You know your perception, your consciousness, your sankara, you know all these the four things, lah. vinyanya, sankara, sanya, you know all these four things. So the four things that you have will always go on one, like Achan said, streams of consciousness. So if you have a bright mind every day, when you die, you always go up. That's why all meditation that Achan mentioned always asks you to be happy, piti sukha, always to have a bright mind, a, a, you know, a happy mind, light non-stained mind, then that only comes from your sila. If not, you cannot get a bright mind. So your sila is the one, your virtues will ensure that you have a bright mind. So you know, I, when I close my eye now, I will know already my eye is bright. My, my, my mind is bright or not, you will know exactly how much positivities you have in your heart and how much negativities you have in your heart, you know already. We cannot block people one. You can bluff me, like I don't have psychic power, but you cannot bluff yourself. One. How narrow-minded are you? How unforgiving are you? How stingy you are? Uh, all these kind of things, you yourself know you cannot bluff people. That's why you see, Achan is always happy. Why? Because we monks always give. When we give, we feel so happy. You smile, I smile, everybody smile. Tonight you sleep, also happy already. So when I smile, I laugh, I meditated, I got the bright mind, my precepts are good, I got the bright mind. So anytime I die, never mind lah, die lah. Bright mind gives me good rebirth. Can be in the heavens or maybe in the human realm at least. Because I do keep my five precepts, I do ten wholesome conducts. This is my insurance policy guarantee. So what can I understand? Okay, so so that's why we are not afraid of death. But in Agutara Nikaya 184, you can key in and find out there are four things that we are afraid of death. Well, let me tell you this. Four things that you are always afraid of death. Number one, unfinished job. All of us are sure got unfinished job. Do you agree? Like today I die, I will think tomorrow, oh, yo, I cannot leave you in chanting already. Yo. Oh, you miss Achambran one more day already. Yo. Correct or not? Retreat not over, why die? Eh? Something like that. There's always unfinished job. How many have no plans for 2024? 
I think some of you have plans 2024. Right? Someone keep telling me I feel so guilty. You are taking people to Perth 2024. I was thinking, oh, oh, that is a plan. A plan that tells you you want to live in future. A plan that tells you you always have done something if you die, unfinished job. You see? So you must have the wisdom to see all jobs that are done should be finished by that day. So the first thing that pulls us down from a happy rebirth, making us, you know, have a very sad heart, a very heavy heart and dark mind, is because, number one, we are afraid of our unfinished jobs, number one. That big regrets. That's why you must forgive yourself. Until today, many people I meet uh, as a monk, they have a lot of death bit regrets. So, fu, oh, you're going to die already. Right? I went to see, I, I'm a counsellor. Monks have to be free counsellors. So, I, I, monks have to do everything. One, uh. That's why I say, uh, monks are called touch and go. <laughs> you know touch and go? No check mati, also you call monk. Mati pun cari monk. Die, also you call me. Birth, also you call me. So we monks are called touch and go. So before you die, I always go and see that if I'm very, last time I was free, I could go and help many people. Now I'm not so free already, but see the affinity. So the, the, the auntie will hold my hand. Then you hold, I want to die already. Yeah. You want to hold my hand. I say, yes, yes, yes. What happened? I'm very sad. I want to die already. Supu, I can't let go of many things. Oh, oh. That bit regrets that I say, ask forgiveness now. No problem one. It is forgiven automatically. Don't make your heart heavy. Then she will tell me, oh, you see, that's why you must always forgive yourself. Because if you don't forgive yourself, ah, at the death bit, that time when you come, I come maybe a bit too late already. They say, last time ah, I got abortion or so poor. I aborted three babies, or blah blah blah. Last time, play play la. Don't know the Buddha Dharma time ah. I aborted three babies. I said, never mind. Now you know you aborted. Ask forgiveness. So let us say, you know, uh, through body, speech, or mind, ask forgiveness, all these sort of things. That I let him, let her do the chanting. Short, short one ah. No energy already. Second thing they say, Sifu, I cannot forgive myself. I say, what? Another thing happened ah. Say yes, ah, Sifu. When my mother died, ah, I was not at her bedside. Wah. the telephone ring, ah, say come to the hospital. Traffic jam, oh. Penang, ah, usually traffic jam one. So I reached the hospital one hour late. My mother already tutup mata already. How? Oh. So I said that is not your fault. That is just causes and condition. Don't blame yourself. So you know all these type of things pull you from getting a good rebirth. Number two. You cannot let go your sensual pleasures in life. Sensual pleasures are the five senses. Uh, now we have Acham Brahmali coming up. He calls, he used the word called sensory pleasures rather than sensual pleasures. And today I say, the one that you always think of is the handphone. So all of you who are handphone, you know, habits, habitual handphone users, be careful. I tell the people, next time uh, when you die, you won't be sleeping like normal people. You will sleep like that. <laughs> you hold your handphone like that. And I'm the Tokong, like, you know Tokong or not? The Achang is a very nice term. He says, funeral undertaker. But in Pinelang, he will come and pull your hand and everything down. And then, you see, you are attached to your sensual pleasures. All of us, have sensual pleasures that we are attached to, not just handphones. So for the veterans here, we have retired, enjoying your retirement age. Remember, don't pick up any hobbies except meditation. Some people, they pick up hobbies at their, after their retirement age. Watering plants, nothing to do with Boring or oh, don't want to read sutta lah, but can buy all the pots, talk to the plants. This will pull you down. Play antiques, buy all the antiques. Got money what? This will also make you the vision come out like the nimita. Hello, coming to die. Antique miss you lah. Nobody tomorrow water the plant. Pam down already. So don't have, you know. Death proximate, we call it death proximate habits. 
this will pull you down. These are the sensual pleasures that pull you down. Number three, what is the problem? The third problem is you don't know where to go. When you die, you don't know where to go. So you better make sure you know where you want to go. You know what I mean? Okay? You close your eyes, you will know already where you are. Most of you, I think we're born in heavens. Lah. At least number one or number two heaven and all the human world. I don't, th I don't think you want to be a ghost, you want to be an animal, you want to be a, a, a hell ram being, right or not? At least three. I also hope to be there. And if I can get into jhanas, very good jhanas, habitually, then perhaps one day I can get to the Brahma world and, and all these sort of things can happen. So most of you will be somewhere in the Tusita heaven, Tawatimsa heaven, Chattu Maharajika heaven. Okay? So you must remember, you must make, I would say the best is you get Nibbana la, full Arahatship, but it is quite difficult. So at least you know, I'm not that bad, 50 something mark, okay, okay one, okay? <laughs> when I die, with my five precepts, ten wholesome conducts, some meditation powers, sila, I come for retreats, maybe I get the first and second heaven. Now, in the sutta called Sumana Sutta, it says that there are three types of devas in the heavens. In the heavens, there are three types of devas. The first deva is called a non-Buddhist deva. They also do good this one. But they don't believe in dana, ayuvano, sukambalam, all these sort of things. We are calling them a non-Buddhist deva. Now, if you go up to the heaven, you are called a Buddhist deva. A Buddhist deva outshines the other devas because you have your dana, sila, and bhavana. Outshines them means you, wow, your, your shirt, everything very lustrous and everything. Number one. Now, the third type of deva is called the Arya deva. Those who have become sotapanas, they will go to the first or second heaven or the sakadakamis, first and second heaven, because when they die, they didn't enter into jhanas. If you die, you don't enter into jhanas, you will be in the heaven already. That's like our Anatta Pindika to Sita heaven, Kim Bimbisara, first heaven as a yaka. So you go there. Okay, I am an Arya Deva. Like Saka Deva Raja, our King Kong is now uh, an Arya, a, a, a Sotapan, hoping to be a uh, Anagami at the end of his uh, renewed existence life. So there are three types of Devas. And then if you are these Buddhist Devas and the Arya Devas, there is a special hall for you, Fatang, where you can continue to cultivate. So don't always say, ah, you go to Deva Re Mati, la, 500 Wai Kama Mati, la, Cham la, Hawa. Make a wish. If I go to Deva Ram and be reborn, I want to go to the Sudharma Hall where I will meet the Arya Devas and the Buddhist Devas and continue to meditate like them. You can always Google this afterwards, Sudharma Hall. Then at least you feel that, oh yo, like that will feel low. If I die, there is still chance for me to continue to meditate and cultivate. If not all of you have the wrong perception, I'm going to heaven means 500 wives come already. Then you say, I'll oh, forget everything already. No, you must have the place and season. So you are doubtful of where you are going. So don't be doubtful of where you want to go. You must know your path. The best is still final enlightenment, fully enlightenment. But if you cannot, at least you know, well, not bad, I will be somewhere here. I have confidence in the Buddha's teachings that will lead me there. Okay? Now, fourth one is, you always think you don't qualify. Like a chancelo, you all qualify for jhanas. You all qualify for nimitas. You all qualify for all the happiness that you can have. But you all say, I'm not qualified. Lah. Like I said just now, look, last time I do abortion before. Now how can nimita come to me? I was a bad mother before. Wah. Not filial piety, blah, blah, blah. So you miss your chance. So that is called, you think you are not qualified. So that's why if you do thing like that, then when you die, I call you a gandaba. Meaning to say you will be roaming and wandering in samsara. You look at the suttas. We have been roaming and wandering in samsara. Because we do not know where we want to go. So how do you die with dignity? With your pure mind. With my precepts. And I always forgive myself and forgive others. So uh, nowadays many of my, my people uh, who know me, they, they copycat. I teach them one thing. Before you die, your grandmother is going to pass away. Kneel down in front of your grandmother. Ask him or ask her or whoever it is, forgive you. Grandma, 
please forgive me all these years I've been your grandchild or your mother. Mom, please forgive me all these years. I may, my body, speech or mind that I have done anything wrong to you. Please forgive me. They are still around. You know, they can stay here. I can't say what. The last organ to, to, to go off is the ear. So take us forgiveness from them. And then reciprocally say to them, I also forgive you for whatever things that you have done because all of us are defiled beings. We have our, what you call, defilement skills. Please do that. And for those of you who say, my mother already passed away. Well, how are you? Now only you tell me. She have told me 10 years ago. Now so late already. 10 years already. Never mind. When you go and pray, you know, Penang people, uh, Chinese ritual, uh, always non-stop praying. One, uh. Do you agree? Uh? Now, that's why I got Tang Che. Uh. Last day or the day uh, before, I think some of you may have told your, 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 your wife or whatever, Eki, Tang Che. Do you agree? So these are things, you have all these things. So you're going to meet your, your tablet or your collaborum. Go there, ask forgiveness. It's still not too late. Mom, today I learned Dharma already. I got a little bit of right view. Ask forgiveness from you in case a body speech and mind. Okay, if you're still around, please forgive me. Or any things that you feel that your heart is burdened, very heavy, say sorry to the picture or to the tablet. It is still not too late. Always remember this. That's why I say forgiveness is very important. So that goes the first question. In this world, do we suffer from random events that is not result of our karma. Yes. So we have random events. So it's meaning to say, sometimes it, not everything is due to karma. Remember, many of us who are Buddhists, we always say everything karma. It's like a, a one term that, like, that, that, that contains everything. Ah, inko ah. Ha, karma lah. To si kuchau to boho lah. Ah, hamikaleo lah. So ki to si kuchau. What we call karma is the coin word that contains everything. No. The Buddha says that everything is due to causes and conditions. And you can look it up in the Sivaka Sutta. The Sivaka Sutta says not everything is due to karma. There are causes and conditions. For example, random can be mean anything can happen to you. For a very simple example, tomorrow you go out, you purposely go under the sun for two hours, sweat a lot, then you flush yourself with the cold water, then you got cold, you say, Sifu, karma got cold. I don't think it's karma. It is the random thing that happened or anything that happened, you know, that can cause this type of things. So that's why the Buddha always tell the monks, monks, when you go to forest, anything can happen to you. Random events can happen to you. Be ready for it. You can be bitten by the snake, by the scorpion, okay? Tsunami can come, the whole kuti can be down, and you also follow it. So not everything is due to karma. Okay, next one. This is on Dear Achan. Could you kindly explain about Vashrayana practices of deity visualization? What is it that about? Actually, this one is just a, a simple thing of deity visualization it is simple in a sense that uh, like what we can do deeper aspects we, we ask the Vashrayanas people but simple way of visualization is the Buddha you know sometimes huh, I always say meditation cannot go directly to very deep one we go from cause to find to nothing remember meditation is this from cause to find to nothing. That's why Achan said at the end, nothing. But you can't reach nothing directly. Yeah? You have to go from, for example, ground floor, park your car, ground floor, come here, press the lift, come here, fourth floor, meditate. You need to go from outside, inside, then to our meditation center. Remember, cause to find to nothing. That's why Achan taught us body scanning. He didn't say go to the mind directly. 
Why did he use body scanning? Because the body is rough, it's coarse. I can press my leg, my eyes, everything is coarse. What? Can see? Coarse, ready for it, warm up first. Fine. Then only nothing. So, this is why sometimes if you cannot get, you know, you're, 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 you're still not, just come up from work, not stable yet. Then you want something. Lah. Of course, the best is parimuka, meaning you know why you are not stable? Because you still think of a job, but you still cannot do the body scanning or you still cannot do the, no inspiration come out. No piti suka. So you always see the Buddha. So it's good to see the Buddha, the white Buddha statue. And then they, every morning we chanted itipiso. Itipiso God means the nine virtues of the Buddha. Don't just chant. Know the meaning. Reflect on the meaning. So, you see, Buddha, Bhagava, Arahatama, Sambudo, you know, Vijja, Charana, a person full of wisdom. Charana means his, the way he carries himself. You see, you respect already. He wouldn't do things hideously. It means in front show you I'm a good monk, behind I'm a bad monk. So the charana, the conduct of the good monks are shown directly. You know, and the teacher of God. So just by reflecting on the virtues of the Buddha. So in time like this, Vashrayana, they can reflect on the virtues of the particular bodhisattva or whatever. Still got virtues one. Whatever it is, like Kuan Yin, people say it's compassion. It reflects compassion. That's why many people say, Sufu, I want to pray Kuan Yin, pray Kuan Yin, pray Kuan Yin. I say, don't just pray to Kuan Yin. Be another Kuan Yin. Do you agree? Be a person who is a compassionate. Compassionate is what? Brahma Vihara. You need your Metta, Karuna, Mudita, and your Upeka that comes at the end. So Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka. This is a reflection of what you must bring out. Rather than just keep praying, tolong, 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 then you, you won't get anything. One important thing is to emulate them, the virtues of the Buddha. So once you get inspired by the virtues of the Buddha, you can meditate already. That's why I have sutta classes. Why do I conduct sutta classes? Because I want to inspire them to meditate. Every time when I meditate, nah, I'm not as good as Acham Brahm, but I try to inspire myself. I think of my Lord Buddha. You know that when the Buddha walked from Bogaya to Sravasti, where I can say he grabbed, grabbed, grabbed so many times one. Nowadays, we all very homey. I like, got aeroplane, is it? Pew, Bogaya stop at Sravasti. I think we take a plane of a Buddha. He has an option. If he wants to use his psychic power, he gets to it very fast. If he says, I don't want to use my psychic power, I have to walk. Barefooted lah. So the Buddha walked from Bogaya to Sravasti. 145 kilometers. I counted already. You can check again. Walk, you know, barefooted lah. Arms round ah. Nowadays, do you want that? Sometimes I, I tell my, my people, you are worse than the Buddha. Buddha can walk 145 kilometers to reach Sravasti and see the five disciples. You all go to one place, ah. Let's say lah, you want the restaurant there lah. <laughs> you want to eat lunch lah. Your car, you know, aircon car lah, not walking ah. Here parking lah. You tell me, sefu, I want to find a place near the restaurant. No need to, no need to walk one. How many of you like that? <laughs> a lot of people like that, right? Then you purposely go and semambulate. Now people say, ah ma. Lose kapa ah, say one round, two round, three round. So he tell, wah wah, jam ngawe ya. The the place, then he says, foot can go down already. Ah, you see. So it means I say walk a bit. Also never mind one. Buddha walk 145 kilometers. You can check just to go and teach his what I call ah uh, plug and play disciples. You know plug and play. Because the five disciples were considered those with little dust. Those with a lot of uh, hard work, but need somebody to put like that, the wisdom can come. I call it plug and play disciples, you know, ready to plug and play. Walk 145. So every time when I meditate, I just see the Buddha. Then I may do the body scanning, I say, wow, Buddha, I really, uh, 
salute to you. You can walk 145 kilometers. My friend uh, parking uh, five minutes walk also <laughs> ngam ngam cham cham ready. Uh, complain, complain. Uh. Oh, salute to you. Then the joy come out. His compassion. Ah, so that's the way you inspire yourself. You know what I mean? Like meditation is playing this way. Like, you just sit like that. Piti suka, piti suka. No one. Like Anguli Mala. Achambram used Anguli Mala yesterday to inspire you. Somebody who has killed 999 people can still become an Arahat. What more you? You kill only ants, cockroaches, <laughs> lizard. I think so. Right or not? Ah, for me, the biggest thing I've killed is a small mouse. I son also told me the biggest animal he killed was a small mouse. That also accidentally, but I don't know why I get into a plastic bag. That I delete already, I hit the mouse die. <laughs> okay, see, this is what we did. But I haven't killed a human being before. So, because of that, I think all of us can practice like Anguli Mala. And remember one thing Anguli Mala until today is remembered by all expectant mothers. Because of this Anguli Mala Parita until today. And you work for every mother, you know. All the mothers come super, super. I want to give birth ready. I don't want to labor pain, all this. Then I say, oh, yes. Why don't you photo step or uh, the Anguli Mala Parita? Only very short sentence. You see a person who has the speed of a cheetah and who dares to use the knife and slay you becomes the noble Arahan. Put down the knife because the Buddha says, Stop, stop, stop. What? Ajahn also say like that. And then his heart can soften by seeing a lady giving birth. It means uh, his nature uh, is not why we say, Your nature is stillness, peace, and calmness. Do you agree? This is our default system. So that's why he used the word, By by noble birth, may you give birth in a peaceful, manner without the labor pain. That's why Achan said, if you are an Arya, you can say, by my noble birth. This is now a different lineage, the lineage of the Aryas. But we don't have it, so that's why Achan said, may my Murrays that have done that today, may I get the Pepsi, Cola, etc. <laughs> so you know, this is one good thing, we link what we learn with what is happening. Okay? So, reflect on the virtues, you can. I think tomorrow, if Achan is around, another one that she always like to mention is Lady Patachara. One of the mentors in so far, his retreats is Lady Patachara, the one who had gone crazy. And then the one, that's why when people ask Achan, have you ever seen a naked lady coming into the shrine hall? Achan will mischievously say, yes, in the sutta it was mentioned. Lady Patachara came in naked. And the moment he came in naked, the Buddha says, Sit down, Patachara. He has the lion's roar. The lady comes down. And all the lady devotees put the shawl or whatever around her. And she listened to the Dharma. And now she became one of the top Lady Arahants. You can read it in the Tarigata. And she got many disciples who were ordained by the Patachara. So that's why whenever you meditate, don't be dry. You know, see things that can motivate you to, 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 to get into the piti sukha, pamoja. One of them is Buddha Nusati. Second one is Dhamma Nusati. The Dharma reflections on the Dharma that the Buddha has taught us. So many things, Anicca, Dukkha, Anyata, things of it. The Sangha, the people who have guided you. And we, the Buddha is not around and all. So we represent the Buddha. But maybe I'm half past six, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> okay? So the, the Sanghas are that You can always reflect. The Devas, especially you, in order to be a Saka Deva Raja, it's not easy, you know. You can check. Why do we emulate the Devas, the way to heaven? Because the Devas, to be a Saka Deva Raja, he has to have seven qualities. You can check in the internet. Four qualities deal with anger. Three qualities deal with generosity and filial piety. So if you can emulate that, it's not bad. You can think of the devas. So we have Buddha Nusati, Dhamma Nusati, Sangha Nusati, Deva Nusati, Sila Nusati. Sila means reflect on the, your precepts. Five precepts. Just keeping five precepts every day when you go back on Tuesday morning, 
the five precepts the Buddha say is so wonderful. The Buddha say in the Anatta Pindika Sutta Sutta, Anatta Pindika Sutta, he says the five precepts give you four things every day. The bliss of ownership. What does it mean? I got money, I can call Tanen Lui, or be Kai Hami, Lu Be Me Wama. Or cry or not? You want to eat one? I can't stop you. Or you are not a monk. So today you want to eat the cuisine or whatever, it's up to you. It's called the bliss of ownership. The bliss of spending. The bliss of debtlessness. Don't owe people money nah, except official loans or whatever it is. Not the along along one or the illegal ones. Debtlessness. And if you, if, you believe, if you give the five precepts, you get the fourth type of bliss. It is called the bliss of blamelessness. Meaning, people say you give the five precepts, you won't be a tupak wai lah. You know tupak wai? You know tupak wai not? Wah, well, see the persons with why ding 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 ding. Well, send your signal already. Ah, you won't be that. And like I said, when I was young, everybody knew I was a Buddhist. So every time the Buddhist society, I was a member of the Buddhist society, they knew that I kept the five precepts. So one of the, one of the things that happened to me every time until I became a lecturer, you know what, hold, what post I got to hold? I was always a treasurer. <laughs> every day in society, uh, you are this project, huh? Walker Tom project. Uh, you call, they call me Sun He. Sun He, you be the treasurer. Uh, you keep money again. Later on, when I was working as a lecturer, uh, there's some project or makan or whatever it is, annual dinner or whatever, uh, you keep the money one. So you say, got to take care of the money. Why? Because they say, you are a Buddhist, you won't steal the money, you won't lie and misuse the money, you won't misappropriate the money. Uh, so that's why you see we have all the boxes, they really write down what is what, what is to be used for what. So this is the beauty of five precepts when you go back. But the beauty of five precepts cannot beat another beauty of eight precepts. Your eight precepts is many, 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 many times better, thousand times, hundred thousand times better than the five precepts. Because you have an extra bliss. The Buddha calls it the bliss of renunciation. Nekama Sukha. Pati nisaga sutta. Nikama sutta means what? You renounce your daily habits. Your usual habits. Like, like you have, you have, in our home, we are like king and princess. La. Do you agree? You have your own little bedroom. Even in your bedroom, you put refrigerator also can. You got a TV in front of you. You can eat popcorn while you are watching the TV. You are the boss in your home. Your favorite pillow. Your favorite teddy bear to hold. Then aircon, sleep, no one, nobody sleep beside you. You got maybe a kaka to even tomorrow take care of your breakfast needs, etc. Nowadays, everybody is well pampered. That's why you don't know your own defilements, our own habitual tendencies. We are creatures of habits, our daily habits. You can have money. Layman got money, can go to a restaurant already. Correct or not? That's why I always tell when I, when I talk Dharma talk in PBA, my aunties and uncles like to listen to my Dharma talk. Because we were the oldest. We go to the Kopi Tiam. Kopi O I don't know how much now, lah, Mang already. Last time was 40 cents, 60 cents. <laughs> ah, last time, ah, when we were young, 40 cents, 60 cents. Kopi O And the fan also, dun, 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 we never complain. Man. You look up at the fan, very dusty. One don't know once a year only clean. <laughs> Do you agree? But we enjoy the kopi all. Now the children come. I haven't seen they want kopi all, kopi all. They want Starbucks. All the bucks coming in the coffee beans, etc. And then the moment they go to the restaurant, now the mother complain to me, sufu sufu. I said, you pamper your child. I said, now my children are ah, very difficult already. Oh. Last time we all ah, got a chance to eat at the kopi tiamai. Economic rights very happy already. If uh, how to say uh, birthday celebration uh, got too cha happy already, correct not? You see now my children uh, the moment you say tomorrow your birthday, daddy want to tell you then eat the first thing you ask got aircon uh. <laughs> Agree or not? Second thing you ask got Wi-Fi uh. <laughs> Two things only. Uh. So we monks uh, have to know what is happening around the world because if not our Dharma talk become 
are from dead. So we need we need to know that we are all creatures of our habits. Buddha call it the vasana. So you have to be careful. If you go for renunciation, like your eight precepts, you have to sleep with everybody, share the toilet, no more attached toilet. You have to you have to eat whatever it is given. The only thing is because of health reasons, you can tell the organizer, I'm suffering from this particular disease. So maybe can I not take this particular dish? If not, everything you must eat. That's our old monks. Huh? You know, I told people, I only have one soap. My soup is called OSA, one sapu all. <laughs> Do you agree? Not like you all. Sometimes you all go to the uh, to say bathroom, you bring a basket one. <laughs> I see oh, all the toothpaste, toothpaste, I don't know what it is. Lah. I take one bar of soup, semua sapu. <laughs> ah, that's why my soup is special brand one. One sapu. Oh, yours many sapu all. <laughs> Agree? Uh, so this is why renunciation is so important. The renunciation gives you check your habits. Once you can check your habits, your defilements, then you ask yourself, lah, is it what I want? That's why you see, huh? when you come for your eight precepts and everything like this, you are like a frog and a tadpole. I can always mention tadpole frog, tadpole frog, many years already. Some of you say, well, listen, I don't know why they're there every day like that. But actually, the wisdom comes from frog and tadpole. If you do not come for a retreat, how do you know your bad habits? How do you know your defilements? Nobody there to point out to you, your parents pamper you so much. You just say, I want this. Manja, my mother give, father give, right now it is like that. Last time we won, kena the cane already. <laughs> ah, last time, ah, we only, not only got came by parents, ah, we got came by teachers. The teacher, ah, I, I just understand until today, I still thank my teachers. Ah. I call all my teachers, Lao Ho, Hobo, all this, tiger and tigress. Not like Achana, he said today, this morning, he saw the tiger in the, in the forest. You know why I thank my, all my teachers? Because all my teachers are beat me one. Last time we got blackboard ruler one, you know. Have you seen the blackboard ruler? We learned the red color, blue color, blue color, red, A, B, C. Oh, I didn't do homework. Wow. The rattan is there. Then last time uh, we got timetable to memorize one. Two times one is one, two times two is four, two times three is six. Cannot go out. Stand on the chair. Stand on the table. Let you malu malu only. Correct or not? Now we learn a lot from the teachers. Now you suddenly go and touch a student, the mother come already. Why you touch my child? That's why many people say they opt for earlier retirement now. <laughs> Do you agree? Not easy. That's why nowadays we couldn't find long-term monks. You only see me here every day. People say, are you again now? Nah? Where have the monks gone? Nobody wants to be a monk. Because the five cent pleasures are too attractive. The pleasures of the world are so attractive. You want to be short term, one can. Uh. So I asked Achan, uh, Achan, why don't you do short term ordination? You know, for monks and nuns in Penang. He said, I don't believe in all of these. All of these are called Mickey Mouse ordination. <laughs> do you agree? I learned it during the week. After that, I forget already. I teach you all the Vinaya, you know, you, Sarmanera, you must know the 10 precepts and the, the 75 Dukatas. After you go back, uh, wa ai ni ni ai wa, then forget everything already. So I, I wasted my breath. So that's why I said, I don't believe in Mickey Mouse ordination. Atan has this wisdom. Last time I, I, he, he taught me Buddhism. Then he said one thing to me. Do you know who is the first Walt Disney producer? Walt Disney producer cartoons are Donald Duck and uh, Mickey Mouse. Then we say like, what Disney producer, don't know what is his name. Like. He said wrong. The Buddha was the first Walt Disney producer. Said, How come? The Buddha talk about Jataka tales. Monkey can talk. <laughs> Frogs can talk. So the first Walt Disney producer is always the Buddha. Then when we're free, he will talk to me like this. Like. I see, who is the first astronaut in this world? 
Then we talk about what Gary Gugari now, all this type of thing. I don't know already the Russian and so on, 1969. He said, no, the first astronaut is a Buddhist astronaut. He's an Arahan. He's called Rohitisa. Find it out in your Nikayas. So we Buddhists have all the first things in life. Okay, so remember, one thing that can always bring us down if we don't have the bliss of renunciation on Nikama Sukha is your creatures of habits. We are creatures of our habits. It's only through renunciation, the frog and the tadpole, you see your defilements. So when you see your defilements, the way to end our rebirth is to have revulsion. So what is, that's what they say, Achan only talk, Jana, 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 never talk wisdom one. Many people classify Achan like this, only talk Jana number one, never talk wisdom one. How to get a wisdom? I always say Achan, you should stress in your class. You should stress that frog and tadpole story can give you the wisdom. So I asked him, where is the wisdom coming from, Achan? He said, it comes from from the absence of something. Do you agree? Absence. You see now, you don't have a five cent pleasures around. Correct? You are staying here, wear white. Choice limited. Wake up times, everything different from your beautiful Sunday. Some of you wake up very late on Sundays. Do you agree? Yeah. You, have your own, you, have your, you have your life here. So when you compare your life, as a renunciation for these eight or nine days, compared with your easy mode life when you were a daily person, okay, that is where you see what is missing. That missing part is already the insight. That's why you, you always talk about stillness. You go for interview, lah. You talk to him about our insight. All he say, come on, sit more, sit more, be more still, be more peaceful, be more calm, be still, be still. You check and see. Every day he will talk about these three words. Because the more still you are, the more you see one thing, how our Sankara play on us. Sankara means volition, our karma. We cannot che tiam tiam. Do you agree? That tells you your Sankara is not your control. It is causes and condition. With jhanas, it is able to stop. It means you ask yourself, do I prefer a restless mind or a stopping mind. It is you to decide what you want. So you see, uh, daily when we wake up, we always have things that play on us. The Buddha say the body is playing on us. Rupa must bath my body, rush to the toilet. Okay, like what he say, must SHIT. Great, and now he tells you to look at the SHIT radio. <laughs> <laughs> Correct? So he says, body is a problem. See your body as repulsive. So when I talk to people, I say, you must learn this thing. Your body is repulsive. Our body has nine holes. You count and see how many holes? Nine holes, no more. The nine holes are where all the outflows come up and they are dirty outflows. That's why when I teach Dharma, I always say our body is like this, you know, stinky rice. Chim punya. We name people know chim punya. Last time when we were staying uh, behind our house, we always have one cook one. We put all the yesterday dishes on chim punya. Then there's one uncle who will cycle to our place and correct all the chim punya. They sit on the feet, the, 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 the pigs don't know where. Lah. Uh, this is our body. That's why we all complain no water. This is called repulsive nature of the body. So when you come for a retreat, you learn, do you want this body again? Do you want this body that keeps seeking your attention every day? Do you agree? Jia Ching Pang Jia Pe Pe Jia so eat everybody merry, happy, but when you shit, you shit a lone one. So this is the troublesome that the body is giving us. That's why I always mention. Why do I always mention that the body must disappear? The body must disappear. 
in your interviews because the heaviness of your body, the burden that it, you carry on from day to day suddenly stops there. You feel so light. That is why we always have the first thing, the disappearing body. The body is repulsive. The body is a foam or a bubble. It is fragile. It can disperse anytime. Achan Cha, if you look into the, the books that you take, when you take the books there, you must read one. Lah. He says, our life, our body is just like a fragile cup. There is an invisible tear there. Okay? But one day it will crack. We don't know. But the important thing is to take care of it. The emperor's three questions, but not to pamper your body. So the Dharma is there for you to see. Number two, all feelings are suffering. The dana is suffering. You got positive feelings, negative feelings, all feelings. They make you suffer one. That's why we are slave of our feelings. That lang si kam cheng cho su. Kam cheng cho lang chiu. Kam cheng cho lang hao. So that's why uh, when a granny came, uh, because now all the granny come and see the sepu one, they bring the small baby boy, come and see sepu. Pray, pray, call sifu, call sifu. Then call sifu, sifu, all me to four, all me to four, sadu, sadu. Ah, chachik kok ho su hu kwa. Then the baby goes, chachik kok, eh, chachik kok. You know what is chachik kok, right? <laughs> Don't know whether it's still used by the modern parents. Chachik kok, chachik kok, chachik kok. And you see, see, sifu, so cute, huh, my grandson. Then the laugh of granny, la, ha, 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 my grandson, so cute, so cute, so cute. I say, hello, granny. <laughs> Sometimes we are quite blunt, sir, because we want to inject dharma directly. I said, Granny, today your baby is giving you a lot of laughter. I said, Granny, tomorrow, the, through the same channel from the baby, he will give you sad tears. The same channel, they give the laughter. It's also through the same channel that you see tears coming out from your eyes. This is the fact of life. Spices in our life. The Buddha called it the eight Lokiya Dhammas. So when a person asks me, you know, in PBA, Sifu, Sifu, how many so long and say, I call it, I call it, I call it, I call Of course, I will say, like, don't be reborn already, it's a better thing. Lah. But I can't tell the auntie like that. I must use a lower level of wisdom. I say, Apo, Posat. I always call the, la, la, the auntie's Lao Pusat. Posat. No, I say, I say, I say, I say, the spices of life won't attack you. But when the food becomes too much, the food becomes too much. When the When the food became a bit stale, non tasty, all of us go for jiao cheng. Do you agree? Jiao cheng, huan jiao jiao, tomato, ketchup, boa, boa. You can't call it a little bit of a hot jiao, ma. Pain se, ma. Retreat, ma. Siang. U jiao cheng, eh. Meaning, we want to go for spices in our food. If you're ready to accept the spices in your food, please be ready to accept the spices in your life. So to end this, I just add a bit of what Ajahn has taught. Nah, he missed something. Remember he was talking to you about walking meditation? You have to walk here, uh, go outside, everything. One day, when we, he was teaching us med walking meditation, he always stressed one point. Because you know why? When I learn walking meditation, uh, I walk zigzag one. Uh. I suddenly walk from here, nobody around. Uh, I zzz, go there already. Then like zigzag, uh, come back. Then he chan said to us, he never reprimand people. One, uh, he always say very good, very good. But during the lecture, he will say, he said, remember, if you go for walking meditation, you choose this route to walk. Let's say this path from your where you sit, to this plant where our brother is, you walk that line, don't go and cross the boundary of another person, the person can walk B, C, D, E, F. Lah. You see, when you walk from here, go to here, walk back. Then say, why Ajahn walk back? He said, this is the wisdom of walking meditation. A baby is born here, he goes from there, when he walks back, he's 80 years old. So he always told me the story of the a small baby and a grandfather sitting side by side. This is our life cycle. I really like that story. He said one day, a baby and a grandpa 
set sorry side by side baby kwa akong akong kwa asun baby ka akong kong wa akong nang no lang kai siang nya we look alike akong kami siang akong lu bota apa pun bota bo mo le wai si mo ba lu be se lui si mo lu liao akong chiu chiu ha baby say akong ti ji hang lu bo ge mo bo ge wai si ge be se lui si ge lu liao akong bo hua le ai yo wai sun gong wa te sa hong lu dai ong de lu bi se akong pai se ha akong ko ha mi wa ching pen pus tu ma ching pen pus this is very good dharma it means we all walk down we go back to the same path so remember in our cultivation the last sentence i will say is in our cultivation always remember if you choose to come back here you come in the world there is there is an smp sales and purchase agreement the invest the small print sales and purchase agreement which many of you did not see I think I know lah. Most of you go and ask for credit card or what. You only see where the crosses are. Cham ya, cham ya, ji ping. Correct or not? Then cham, cham, cham. But so thick with the book. Tick, tick, tang, tang, tang. Then later on got problem. You see, you go to the bank and query why like that happen, happen. The 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 banker will say you didn't see the small print lah. The bank will not be liable for D C C C. Correct or not? They say, ayo, kuda cham ya, si bo kuah. So the baby also the same lah. When you are born into this world, you forgot you have signed an S and P agreement. The S and P agreement you sign with nature. That is, when you are born, when you are born, you cry, people laugh. When you reach eighty years old or so, when you die, you laugh, people cry for you. So that's why I can say, don't come back here and wear nappies. If you choose to come back, because you press. The wrong button. What is the wrong button that you choose? That you press. People must press the red button. You go and press the green button. The green button is you always like something here, which you are waiting for. That's why you come back. Understand? Why do you come back? Because of only one word. The Buddha calls it bhava tanha. Bhava tanha means something you wait for. This life you hope tomorrow. Will still get it. Why? Because we are victims of gratification. The Buddha said, "All of us are victims of gratification, victims of indulgence." Do you agree? Indulgence means what? Pickle. Means what? Hello, he. Tao ju hello, he. Be pay. Tio si gu gu jia gai hou jia is called indulgence. Chim lo he. Gratification. Can you hear that song? Ma zai gu bui, da da ji bui. Pen indulgence. And the third one is intoxication. Intoxication is not the the fifth precept. It is the intoxication of the five senses. So when people ask me what is the meaning of intoxication, I said you cannot discriminate between the good and the bad. That's why we call you intoxication. So the last reminder: ask yourself whether you want to come back here and wear nappies again. Come back here one more round. The rebirth, old age, sickness, and death. We have been coming back here, like I just said this morning, just like the 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 bones stack up. You use the Vapula Mountain, just like the tears saltish of the oceans that you have, just like the blood that you can see. So this we have been coming here for so round, so many rounds. So why do you come for retreat? Why do you come to follow the noble A four path? Because we hope to press the stop button. So may all of us successfully press the stop button. I need to stop now. I hope you enjoy the talk today. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Good night, everyone.